Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. Hospices and rehab centers are filled with people transitioning into the next world and those dealing with their own personal demons in this world. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that these kinds of institutions can often be haunted. Those are the stories we'll be dealing with tonight. If you enjoy them, give them a thumbs up and comment below so we can keep meeting here every Thursday at 5 p.m. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together. I recently completed a course to become a nursing assistant, and something pretty weird happened to me at the hospice where I was doing my practicum. I want to start off by saying that I don't normally believe in spirits or anything paranormal, and I hadn't had anything really happen to me in my life that would change my mind. That is, until this particular night. I was working the evening shift at a hospice care facility and I finished up around 11.30 p.m. It was my second to last shift until I was done with my practicum. I worked on the dementia unit and that was on the second floor. So in order to get out of the building, I had to take the elevator down to the main level, then walk down a really long, dark, creepy hallway to get to the entrance of the building. There were rooms on both sides of the hallway and some people would sleep with their doors open. Since it was already 11.30 at night, the majority, if not all, of the residents were sound asleep. If the residents decided to sleep with their doors open, there is enough ambient light from the hallway to see into their rooms pretty well. As I was passing one of the very last rooms on the hallway, I glanced in and stopped dead in my tracks. Inside was an old lady on top of her bed in the dark, on her hands and knees, with her back arched in a sort of cat-like pose that you do in yoga, only her head was up and she was looking directly at me. If you don't know what that pose looks like, here's a photo. But imagine that the head is craned up, looking directly into your eyes. Yeah, not creepy at all, right? It was so scary. She was an old woman probably in her late 80s or early 90s. Her face had absolutely no expression. Her skin looked gray, and her eyes were sunken in, and her lips had a black-blue tinge to them. She didn't look alive, or even human for that matter. I also remember that the room had cold air and a really freaky, weird smell coming from it. With that being said, though, the building was a hospice, with a lot of sick and dying people residing in those rooms, and some of them had dementia, so odd smells and strange behavior aren't all that rare. Still, it was shocking to see her like that. So I said, Hello? Are you alright? No answer. I thought the best thing to do was go grab a nurse so that we could both go and make sure that she was okay. So I walked back to the nursing station and I told the nurse on duty the room number and what I had seen. I didn't go into that much detail. I think I just said something like, there's a lady in room 304 that's awake and I think she might need some assistance. The nurse gave me a funny look and she said that there was no one living in that room currently. I thought I may have gotten the room number wrong. So I walked with her back down the hall to the room but when we got there, I told her that yes, that was indeed the right room and the right room number. We both looked inside and the woman was gone. We turned on the lights and looked around inside, but we found nothing. Initially, I was embarrassed, so we tried to think of a rational explanation for what I saw. We thought maybe one of the other residents got confused and snuck into that room, but no. There was no one awake in the entire unit, and no one else was around. At that point, the hairs on the back of my neck started standing up. Everyone was fast asleep, 
and I was left completely baffled. But I didn't have much time to freak out because I was too busy questioning my own sanity. As we walked away from the room, the nurse casually told me that the lady who lived there had passed away the night before. She said, That poor old lady. We found her in the strangest position, face down and slumped over in a cat-like pose. No lie. I couldn't make this up if I tried. I didn't sleep that night. I was so freaked out by the time I got home, I never wanted to go back again. Still to this day, I wonder if that was the spirit of the lady that I saw who passed away. I'd like to say that it was just my mind playing tricks on me after a long shift. But I know what I saw. She was there, and seemingly in the flesh. It's not that I didn't believe in spirits before. I just never thought that the way that horror movies presented the idea of ghosts was ever really believable. However, that's literally what I experienced in the hospice that night. I was always one of those science is fact type of people that said, I've never seen any scientific evidence of any real paranormal anomalies. But boy, oh boy, was I wrong. And I'll tell you, my mind has been changed since that night. And here is a reply from the comment section. My mother is a nurse and she's witnessed some crazy stuff over the years. The most disturbing of which was when a CNA came running back to the nurse's desk, bawling her eyes out. She said she went in to get some laundry from a patient's room when she found herself face to face with what looked like an elderly individual with glowing red eyes and raspy breathing. She quit after that. I don't really blame her. This happened back in 2015. It was an experience that changed my perception of the world completely. After high school, I went to rehab in Las Vegas, a place called Desert Hope. It was a really nice place. I was on my father's insurance, so it was a pretty cushy setup. All of the rooms were pretty much like hotel suites. Despite that, from day one I couldn't get any sleep, but I figured it was from detox. But fast forward a week, I was off the detox meds and sober for the first time in three years. I know that as far as reputable sources go, freshly sober people aren't exactly top-notch witnesses, but there were some things that just couldn't be explained away by blaming it on a bad case of the DTs. For the record, I was in rehab for drinking, and after this rehab stint, I went on to detox three more times at three different rehabs that were not haunted. So it wasn't just detox. This place was haunted. It had a weird vibe from the start. And some research I did later told me that the building was originally used as a hospice before they repurposed it into a rehab. And I think that had everything to do with what I experienced there. Many of the rooms had unseen ghostly residents still hanging around. In one of the rooms, you could hear a woman sobbing all the time. I and others heard it a lot. My first encounter with her happened during the day. We had group therapy and I had forgotten my workbook back in my room, so I went back to grab it. On my way, I heard a woman sobbing in another room and I knocked on the door. There was no answer. On my way back to group, I stopped at the nurse's station and told them about it, but they told me to just ignore it and said that all the rooms were empty and my mind must be playing tricks on me. Okay. But later that day, two other people mentioned hearing the same thing too. They checked and that room and the rooms nearby were empty. So who was crying? My room had its own quirks 
I would be in there alone and hear someone throwing up in the bathroom. I just thought maybe it was the sound of somebody from upstairs or nearby. As you can well imagine, a lot of people spend a good bit of time yakking their first week in detox. But then one day, I walked into the room while my roommate was sitting on her bed, alone. As I walked in, her face went completely white. She said, Dude, who's in our bathroom? I shrugged and said, I don't know. She said, Someone's been throwing up in the bathroom for the last hour. I thought it was you. Well, this sparked an investigation on our part. After finding our bathroom was empty, we knocked on every room anywhere near us to see if somebody had been throwing up for the past hour. But there was no one. Then we thought maybe the men's floor above us carried the sound down through the vents. Desert Hope is very strict about keeping men and women separate and there were men's floors and women's floors. So we called up through the vents and caught the attention of a guy upstairs. We asked him to please check the rooms above us and around us to see if anyone had been vomiting. But no one was sick anywhere near us. This continued to happen often whenever someone was alone in the room. Every night as I tried to sleep, I would feel a presence near me. It just felt like they were trying to mess with me. Honestly, I started to lose my mind. My mental state was already extremely fragile, and at that time, I didn't believe in spirits or the afterlife, so this was really making me unravel. Since my arrival, I saw other patients going through the exact same kind of experiences that I did. But every time someone mentioned the presence of spirits too loudly, they would be sent off to the psych ward for a few days, and they'd come back heavily sedated. And I'm talking, can't hold a conversation, heavily sedated. That was really scary stuff. Everyone, including the nurses, warned me to stay quiet and just deal with it until I could get out of there. They said just try to keep my mouth shut about it. Otherwise, the powers that be, who had every reason to hide the fact that the place was haunted, would punish me. After all, who wants to be known as the haunted rehab when their main goal, let's face it, was making money off of us? I actually spent so much time avoiding my room at night that I got a citation and had to go before a disciplinary hearing. I remember being in this room with five really intimidating board members and the woman in charge asking me why I refused to go into my room. I was like, um, because it's haunted as hell? Have you not heard about this? They all started talking to me like I was an errant child, mocking me and making me feel like such a fool. They were all very unsympathetic and told me that if I didn't stay in my room, I would be sent to the psych ward. Then, they dismissed me. It was one of my most humiliating and terrifying experiences, because I knew that they really could do anything they wanted to me. They held all the power. And they absolutely had to know that the place was haunted. Everyone, from the cleaning crew to the nurses, to the board. There is no way they didn't know this. After years of patients having the same complaints, the same delusions month after month, year after year, they knew. And they would do anything to keep it quiet and keep that money rolling in. I could tell by how practiced the board members were during my hearing, with each of them saying the same thing telling me that I was crazy and threatening me with the psych ward just to keep me quiet. I heard from other patients that they had been threatened in the exact same manner, some with the exact same words. It made me feel scared and hopeless. Some staff, though, were very helpful, but quietly, on the down low. A woman on the cleaning crew kept an extra crucifix on her cleaning cart to put in the room of any patient who was having a lot of ghostly trouble. I had it in my room for a few days. She didn't speak English very well, 
but she saw me crying all the time, and I guess she knew how to spot a haunted person. And the nurses absolutely knew. They tried not to talk about it because they didn't want to put ideas into anyone's head. Plus, based on how the board responded to me, I doubt they would feel comfortable being forthright about it with patients as they didn't want to get fired. In the beginning, the nurses tried to tell me that I was imagining things, but then they started getting a little more real about it, but again, on the down low. Definitely though, it was an uncomfortable topic for them, and they often told me that I would be wise to just keep my paranormal issues to myself. There was one very kind night nurse. She tried to help me. She gave me a Bible and told me that reading it would help make the spirits leave me alone. I tried it for a few nights, but the pages would go blurry in sections, and the letters would wiggle around on the page. This never happened when I read other books in rehab, only with the Bible. It almost felt like the spirits were upset that I was ignoring them. The whole time, everyone kept telling me that spirits flock towards those who can sense them, hence why they were latching on to me. So when I tried to ignore them and push them away, they would kind of try to force me to acknowledge them. I think that's what the whole thing was about. Those souls just wanted to be acknowledged, and the harder I or anyone else tried to deny them, the worse it got. That night nurse spent a lot of time telling me about her relationship with God and discussing religion with me. We ended up praying together with another nurse and a few of the other patients who were struggling with the paranormal. And things actually did start to get better for me. I was still struggling, but I wasn't drowning anymore. There was one room on our floor that no one stayed in for more than a week because they would beg to get transferred to a new room. Multiple people claimed that they would wake up in the middle of the night completely paralyzed, and then the room would be flipped upside down. Now, I don't know what that means, but new intakes would be put into that room, and they kept recounting the same experience without speaking to one another time and time again. The nurses said that it was a very common complaint for that particular room. I got pretty tight with those nurses because I would spend my nights at the nurse's station avoiding my room, and I count them as my most reputable witnesses. At least two of them told me they had their own paranormal stories, and most of them agreed that the building was haunted, recounting cycle after cycle of patients complaining about the same phenomena in the same rooms. By cycle, I mean that every 30 days there was a completely new group of patients. Obviously there was some overlap, but for the most part, all new people came and went after 30 days. So fast forward another year, and I was in another rehab, and I was outside smoking a cigarette and talking with some of the guys. Now technically we were not allowed to talk to boys, but hey, I'm a rebel. We were discussing the other rehabs that we'd been to, and Desert Hope came up. I immediately said, Oh yeah, that place is haunted. And the two guys started cracking up laughing. It turns out that one of them had been to Desert Hope a few months after I had been there, and had experienced a lot of hauntings himself. He had kept a journal with all of his paranormal experiences, to help him cope with the stress of trying not to be driven insane by the hauntings that the staff, for the most part, denied even existed. The two of them had been looking through his journal the night before and were arguing over the existence of ghosts. So it was funny to them that the first person they met that mentioned Desert Hope was saying ghosts right away. I found this significant because I really thought that it was just the women's floor that was haunted. So to hear it from a guy who couldn't have spoken to the women in rehab due to the strict no fraternizing rule, that he also experienced ghosts there, well, that just reinforced what I already knew. 
Rehab is great, but a haunted rehab, not so much. I'm just over a year sober now, in case anyone was wondering. Yay me! And my experience at Desert Hope convinced me that there is more to this world than what we can see. This poster has her own YouTube channel. The link is posted in the description below. Well, at least you have to admit that ghosts and spirits do make this world a whole lot more interesting. Though I'm not sure I'd like to encounter some of the things talked about in tonight's stories. How about you? If you'd like to hear more stories like this, click on the playlist at the end of the video or list it in the pinned comment below. They can keep you entertained until we meet again next Thursday at 5 p.m. I'd like to thank all of you for listening tonight and for your continued support. I really do value each and every one of you who listens to my stories. So thank you. So, until next time, stay scared, my friends. <laughs>